Here we take a look at ROV CMOL, Credit Market Operational Liquidity Risk with Asset Liability Management Software, where we're focusing on the analytical models module, where we calculate numerically, analytically, and structurally PD, EAD, LEQ, LGD, and so forth. And we'll see how that actually works. In this example, we just started CMOL software, and I clicked on the me file menu icon and selected load example where multiple examples are loaded that way it facilitates our uh, discussion of the various uh, you know models that's incorporated and the first thing I do is go to the analytical models tab under AM tab analytical models you will see credit structural models time series portfolio and just credit models in general structural models just implies Things like exposure default, EAD, LGD, loss given default, probably default PD, and volatility. Where you're entering historical data typically or you know perceived predicted models, predicted numbers, and predicted data. Um, and you would calculate the results based on closed form structural models. Credit time series pertains to data and models that require time series data. So in this case, historical stock prices where we're calculating uh, volatility of those stock prices historically. So we have a series of time series data. Under credit portfolio type models pertains to different models that uh, run under a portfolio constraint where we have various amounts, various assets, not just a single asset but multiple, and all of them are put together within a portfolio. So for example, a value at risk, a VAR of a portfolio of um, using a static covariance method where we have multiple amounts, different volatilities for each of those assets and so forth. And finally, credit models are just all the credit models in general. Um, you have basic models, delta gamma hedging. Things are not pertaining specifically to credit per se, uh, where we have bonds, we have pricing yields, hedging models, put call parity, option sensitivity, forecasting models, exotic options, derivatives, and so forth. So those do not pertain specifically, like I mentioned, uh, to credit models. So to get started, in any one of these subcategories or subtabs, let's just go to credit structural model. Uh, you can select, first of all, select the model that you're interested in. Let's say exposure at default, step one. So on the EAD, you have multiple various ways of calculating EAD. You have uh, credit risk plus model, retail EAD using something called a CCF, a credit conversion factor. Um, these are very famous models, like LEQs, loan equivalent uh, you know, measures and so forth. Um, CCF, which are your credit conversion factors. And by the way, the examples and details, examples and illustrations are listed down here. So depending on what you select in this model, you will be provided a uh, quick and dirty little explanation. So select the model that you want, for instance. Um, enter in the data that's required. For example, name, credit exposure, your PD and your percentile. All of the input cells are white in color. So anything that's calculated are going to be gray in color. In this case, you can add as many rows or columns as you want, as many decimal points as you're interested in. Um, and here it says, you know, en enter numerical inputs only. So for example, $1,000, just enter in 1,000. Okay, and 99% please input as 0 0.99 because 0 0.99 is 99% and so forth. You can save as many of these models as you wish. So for example, I've already pre-entered an EAD exposure at default credit conversion factor model, uh, which I've selected here and entered the data here either from uh, Excel where I copy pasted as usual or manually entered the data in this case. So for example, if I have uh, data in here and I wanted to use something like uh, Microsoft Excel, I can you know, have this data copied Okay, I'll right click and I will do a copy in this case and I will go to uh, whatever location that I'm interested in and do a control V to paste the data in, in this example. So as many rows, as many columns as needed in this example. And I can save as many models as I wish on here, arrange the sequence of the models, bring it up or down, um, and just make sure you hit the save when you're done or save as to create a new model. You can, again, save as, ma as many example models as you want that you can resurrect back in the future. But whatever you do here, again, each of these subtabs might have multiple models that you're saving, and that's all great. But once you're done, make sure to click on File Save As in this case. When you do a File Save As, this saves it as a single ROV CML file, and you can actually resurrect that file, and it will be encrypted 
and it will be password encrypted and locked up. So if somebody steals your file, they would not be able to access the information that you've entered in that file. So for example, if I wanted the EAD using credit conversion factor, click compute and out comes the results right here. Here's my CCF percentages. Here's my expected future EAD using this model. Uh, loss given default, for example, here's my LGD calculations. Um, I will do, let's say, a probability of default or PD, probability default utilizing market comparables, different companies that I have here, asset value, liabilities, risk-free rate, maturity, and so forth, and the correlations across them. Um, and I can calculate my pro probability of default PD spreads in this case. Implied volatility of an option, um, loss given default, credit risk plus to calculate the number of average defaults and so forth. So I can calculate any of these EAD, LGD, PD models. Um, then I can go also to the time series. Again, enter in the data in the white area, selecting the model first, step one. So I can use volatility, I can use Garch model or historical volatility. In this case, let's just use a historical volatility and I copy pasted the data in here. Click compute and here's my historical volatility in this case, you know, 1.6% uh, in this example. So because there's very few fluctuation here. Those are my computations. I can even look at the chart if I have some charts that pertains to the uh, calculation. So if there are any types of uh, charts that's uh, available. Okay. Credit portfolio, same example, and credit models, same exact example. So let's just illustrate a credit model example where we, we do an economic capital for a revolving credit example. We do a uh, credit risk for PD, EAD, LGD, and um, your percentage, in this case your value at risk, 99.9%. .9%. You enter those data in, and I say revolving credit uh, for retail based on Basel III. And I can also, by the way, uh, in step four and step five, these are optional. So in the rows, I can select one of the inputs, let's say PD, going through the rows. So here are my rows. And I can change it from probably a default, changing from 1% to 10%, step of 1%. So what that means is it will test one, two, three, all the way to 10% across the rows. And in the columns, I can change LGD. I'm creating a scenario analysis, in other words, a scenario table. So my loss given default of 75% to 95% stepwise of 5%. So it will go from 75 to 80, 85, 90, 95%. So these are my LGDs and these are my PDs. And in here, the results would be my whatever I had selected. In this case, revolving credits uh, result. So I click compute and here's my data. So here's my economic capital for revolving credit at an LGD of 75% and a PD of 1%. If my PD goes up to 10%, this is my economic capital, uh, even if my LGD remains the same, and so forth and so on. So you create a scenario analysis, and here are your scenarios, various scenarios of your um, LGD and PD values. So very, very simple to use. Again, you can save as many models as you wish. Uh, for each of these models, not every model will have charts and tables, so depending on the type of model that you're looking at. Uh, you may get the charts, you may get, uh, you know, data and so forth, or just data results. So very simple to use.